Coming to you live from the Stream.TV studios in Hollywood, California, Pensado's Place is brought to you by Vintage King, The Recording Connection, and The Blackbird Academy. Our guest, Mike Dean, has done it all, seen it all, and been at the center of it all. Smoke We've got all. a brand new ITL. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> we got a brand new ITL. We've got a lot of information on the Pensado Awards. You're at the place, baby. It's Pensado's place. <sighs> Hey everybody, glad to have you back. Uh, it's been a fun-filled week, a lot of things going on, so we're gonna jump right into it today. Herbert? Well, you know what I'm enjoying is that you actually steep your tea with a pen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it just, it's a, what, what kind of tea would that be? Um, I think it's oolong. Oolong, which, which <laughs> kind of stands, into a straight for, line. Which stands <laughs> for muddy and dirty. I don't know. Exactly, or poisonous. I don't know. Uh, how was your week, sir? Oh, pretty good, you know. Um, culminating in today's guest, Mike Dean is somebody that I just, you know, dearly care yeah. about and yeah. have admired so long. And, and I know, I and know, a returning champion. I know the inside story and the outside story, Absolutely. and they're both incredible. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, we got a lot of information. Shall we pack it in Let's and get do it. it going? Do it. Cool. Hey, everybody! Always great to see you. Hope you are well. Time for our weekly trip through Audio Land. Mm -hmm. Lots of stuff going on. First and foremost. Special, special shout out to our favorite group, the Pensado students. Literally on my way here about 20 minutes ago, they sent me a text. They just passed the 10,000 member mark. Yay. That's an amazing milestone. This is a self-administered, self-regulated group, a real example of your community. Um, Dave and I lend them the name, and they do all the rest. Um, and we do it quite well. We've watched this growth commensurate with ours, and they are an amazing group of people. So congratulations to all the members. All of you are really valuable. Uh, and if you're not a member, you should join. <clears throat> they run a pretty strict operation, so they, they want really mm -hmm. positive people Let me clarify to join something. and be part of the show. We don't want everybody. <laughs> 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 nah. Yeah, you're right. When I say we, they. Right. Uh, but the thing I like about the Pensada students is, is they started it, they administer it, they run it, and they're exactly who I, I, I'm so proud our audience is. Absolutely. They, Absolutely. they represent the 99% of who this show's for. Absolutely. We uh, couldn't do it without them. Not a Absolutely. So, you know, big props and big management props, frankly, because I know what it's like to administer a big group. Bill Kamek, F.L. Freeman, yeah. Gordon Greylock, Ma'at Hotep, and Nabil Mahadam. Um, you guys have been incredible. Another shout out, I got a call this morning from our boy Scott Peterson. We, we love Scott, right? Yeah, Scott. Uh, Scott just became head of business development for Morris Light and Sound in Nashville. Now, Morris Light and Sound, they do touring for folks like Kenny Chesney, Florida Georgia Line, Jake Owens, Big and Rich, a bunch of corporations and more. Um, let me tell you something, Morris, you got a good one in Scotty. Scotty's a great guy, a passionate yeah, yes. guy. And if you heard him talk to me about your company this morning, you know you made the right choice. Congratulations, Scotty. Um, on our front, moving on, our bud Will Thompson informed me that our subscribers are at the 70,000 mark. That is a testament to you, absolutely smoking. We're on the march toward 100,000 subscribers, and thanks from Dave and I and Team Pensada. Keep at it if you would, it's a big deal. You know, a lot of people don't know, but if you took 70,000 subscribers and put them back to back to back, they would stretch from Washington to New York City. Wow, that is an amazing fact. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of people. Did you, um, how long did the algorithm take for you to figure that out, or did you do it on an app? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's just, uh, in, it exists in I'm, your I'm a product of the fine education system in the state of Georgia. Oh, they <laughs> <laughs> well then, as they'd say in the South, we appreciate it. And Florida. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> As you know, uh, Dave and I certainly feel the Pensado sponsors are just amongst the best in the world. Vintage King, incredible. The Blackbird Academy, you know what we think about the excellence of that school. Studio 202 out of Washington, D.C. with Ron Dixon, who we spent some time last mm -hmm. week. Good to see The you, recording Ron. connection we had lunch with yesterday. Everybody is in game plan mode with us for new and special opportunities for all you guys. We'll be back at you in a moment as soon as we finalize. We'd like to get this stuff right, and we are 
proud and honored to uh, have them as supporters mm -hmm. and want you to support them. Go to their sites, see what they're doing, tell them we sent you. Um, and next week, we'll have some new information regarding some other sponsors, correct? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, we're proud about that. Okay, um, exciting Pensado Award news. Lord have mercy, it's been an amazing whirlwind. Let's talk about hosts. Three of the four, three of the four hosts have been confirmed. Let me tell you who they are. Rock giant and all-around badass, the acronym himself, CLA, the one and only Chris Lord Alge is one of the yeah. hosts. Let's hear a round of applause yeah. for that. Yeah. I really like Stunningly Chris. Stunningly talented, beautiful person inside and out, about to be a new mom, runs the Red Bottom Foundation for Women, straight from Miami, bringing the spice and Latina flavor, Marcella Arakia. She's going to be one of the hosts. Okay. Yeah, and New York icon, educator, DJ, Toastmaster, hit maker, Jay-Z's guy, young guru. He's also going to be a host. Round of applause, please. Am I the only one applauding? Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. The house is full. There's like a thousand people out there you guys can't see. Anyways, um, and as a special bonus, after the show in the Pensado Playroom, you know, we got to have a hot DJ. Guru says, got to be him. So young Guru is not only going to host it, he's going to be on the ones and twos, bodies bumping, mascara melting, every kind of music he's going to include. Get your behind in there and party. It's going to be fire. Trust me when I tell you. By the end of this week, we'll have our fourth host locked in. And I'll just tell you that there's coming from the country community down Nashville way, but let us let us get finished. And they're going to rock this. They are as excited. I, it took us maybe 10 seconds on the phone to ask where they all said yes right away, correct? Yeah, if that. It, yeah, I mean, just amazing. We're so... We're blessed to have a, 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 a pro staff that's that truly, truly, truly understands uh, the importance of disseminating this information out to the guys out there. You know? and, and, and the hosts are representative of the community, the broader community. We don't have one specific genre. We're covering all the stuff. Um, they're excited about it. They're going to bring the, the noise. The other thing we did on Saturday is Andrew Sheps joined it, Dave and I. We had a great Google Hang with our online producers. That was fun. Uh, I will tell you that the producers came with great information. Yes. They had some great suggestions. Wasn't, wasn't it a good time? Uh, excellent time. I mean, we, we, you know, they did what they were supposed to do. They, they, they set boundaries for us, gave us some great well, one, ideas. One slight problem. Cool what? Well, the dude from Costa Rica, I think, was after my job because he was so was good. good. Yeah, I, I just shut up. I was like, okay. Well, he I'll had just... some great ideas. Everybody had good ideas. They really had great ideas. The, the big deal for us, it was an example of what we've been saying since literally December, that you guys are going to shape this award show. It is your award show. They came Everybody came, real community power, had great success, and we are making some modifications per those suggestions. And a, and a couple of categories, too. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, fabulous, fabulous input. Um, this train is pulling out and rolling. Go to PensadoAwards.com for oh. your info. And, and can I say, the, can I say the, the unique thing that only the, uh, the, that committee got to see? Yes. I can talk about that? You can, sure. Okay. I'll, I'll use a graphic. Well... Probably don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we, un we unveiled our, what our award looks like. and uh, That's just sad. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just sad. I'll fix all this, guys. <laughs> don't worry about it. So as I was saying. It was, no, it was very well received. It was. You and, uh, and, and uh, the team involved in that. No, no kidding, Herb. You guys did an incredible job coming up with an award that really does kind of symbolize what we're trying to do. Yeah, I, I, it, it, it's really well done, my thank friend. Thank you, man. Thanks. Um, I really do like it. And by the way, it looks like this, but just a little bigger. Yeah, which that looks like a rabbit. So the audio rabbit. Well, well don't worry. Don't don't go there. Uh, PensadoAwards.com is where you go for all your info. You can get your 50 bucks tickets there. You can get hotel options that are reasonable. You can see who the pro committee is. We're putting pictures and names of the online producers. Um, get it popping. Next week, what we'll do is we'll unveil the categories. We'll unveil the real picture of the award design and show you that. We'll also tell you the, fi the new host, the final host. Um, and here's one last thing that's been very cool. You guys have been asking Will and me and a bunch of other people how to dress. Good question. So this is what I would tell Dangerous you. Dangerous question. Trot out your inner rock star, whatever that is. Step it up, make it hot. Men, get your swagger on. Ladies, this is your night to show out. 
put your sexy on, have a great, great time. We don't care what it is. It's your own interpretation. Make it look good. Tune it up. And for everybody, everybody's invited, regardless of size, shape, color, genre, music, country of origin, we don't care. Gather, honor, celebrate. Remember the tagline, bodies bumping, mascara melting. That's what we're <laughs> going to do with this show. PensadoAwards.com, be there. Dave, what's our ITL? Oh, uh, we're finishing up the ITL from last episode where we were discussing some of the intricacies of uh, mastering with Gene Grimaldi. Okay, continuing here at Oasis Mastering with uh, Gene Grimaldi. Uh, I, I know you guys got a lot out of that last one, and we're going to continue some of these uh, concepts and subjects and go a little bit deeper dive on this. So uh, here we go. Gene? What's up? What's up, man? Uh, I see you got the same clothes on you had last week, and so do I. <laughs> right, let's jump right in. You ready? Yeah. Okay. On my stuff, every once in a while, you'll politely say that 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 maybe you could you could do a little more with what I've given you if I uh, if I um, take this track or that track and kind of don't compress it quite as much. What was it about? that particular element that you thought could be improved? Would it be, a, would it be the way it's poking into the mix and, 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 and staying in the forefront? It's, if it's too much compression, then maybe it needs to breathe a little more so I can mm -hmm. poke out and stab, uh, <laughs> maybe get a snare to pop I got more, you. or maybe mm -hmm. get, get the kick to pop more, mm -hmm. or just let it breathe a little more and mm -hmm. let me close it down just a, a little bit. Because cool. I, you know, when you've you're... always you've always beat what I've done when you ask that, so I appreciate yeah, you doing that's, that. Yeah, that's kind of you know what I'm, I'm gonna stop you, Gene, because this reminds me of something, guys. Um, I think you should have a relationship with your mastering engineer because I respect Gene and and all the guys I work with, and I love it when they when they tell me that they can do their job better if I give them the tools to do it better, and I think that. That's a very valuable asset and commodity for me. In fact, going all the way back to your mentor and mine, Eddie Schreier, hmm. who, who is the founder of Oasis and 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 still our our leader, uh, Eddie would when I first moved to LA, he, he would critique my mixes for me. I could take them to him before uh, I was going to show them to anybody else, and he'd 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 suggest things. And and, and when he when he'd master a record that. He thought it was spectacular. He'd call me up and let me listen to it, and he'd compare it and tell me why it was better than mine. And uh, not just in, in in having a mastering friend, but just having a colleague to work with or several. And there's internet places where you can do that too. But Ben, while we're talking about this, thanks for doing yeah. that for me because that helps me so much. Because I've been struggling with how to approach the stereo bus in terms of limiting and compression. And um, it's, it's, I've learned a lot from you in that area. I mean, hey, I learned a lot from Ed critiquing my mastering, too. Mm -hmm. So it's the same way. You Do you know, have so. a particular philosophy about the stereo bus? Um, I, I don't mind two bus compression and, and, you know, a little bit of uh, EQ on it as long as it's not heavily compressed and it, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have, like, L2 limiters on it. So I've um, given you some stuff that's just clamped down. And, and I you asked <laughs> you to take it off, right? right yeah, yeah it though, no, yeah. I know. It's it, because it's... Uh, I think maybe uh, maybe you're doing but I'm getting less. Better. I, yeah. I'm getting better. Yeah. Because now I know how to clamp it without clamping it. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, well, I don't want this show to be about me, guys. <laughs> One of the things I like about Gene is Gene uh, references other material, sometimes in the context of the of what he's working on, but mostly just he's a he's just a fan of music. Uh, always has CDs around. Always listening to music. How do you do you? I love I love refing. Yeah. Okay. Is that yeah. common with mastering engineers? I, from my perspective, it's not. It helps with the balance, you know. When it's, it's something that I that I'm working on, a lot of bands and artists mm -hmm. chase everyone else, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. and you know it needs to be in a certain place, and and that's kind so of you, why I use ref. Okay. That's what why I ref. I, use, I ref like more than anybody on the planet. I know. You got so many. You got but more files than I do on, on CDs. I've got friends, including yourself, that just, you, you, the, your RAM stores your references so well. Like if I blink, my RAM's erased, so I have to go, I have to go listen to something else. You know, and I, you know it's, it's good to know 
what not to do at times. You know, when you hear something, you, mm -hmm. you just say, oh, God, how did my clients, I could never do that with my clients. They, they would kill me, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I hear something that's over compressed yeah. or, or, you know, it's um, just tearing your head mm -hmm. off. You know, it's like. But that's cool. Yeah. That, point, that, that speaks to the point yeah. about having relationships between mastering and mixing. Uh, how have the tools that you use changed in terms of the way you use them and, and the tools themselves? You can do way more now than you could. Yeah. Software, to me, is so precise. So you've and, incorporated some software in your, yeah, in your workflow? I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, use cool. a, I use a lot of software now. Cool. Yeah. What are some plugins that, that someone might have at home that's not uh, a pro and it's more of an amateur? Uh, are there any common plugins or common forms of plugins that you can recommend for them? The, the, you just oh, let need... me say it backwards. Okay. Could you take like a hundred dollar EQ plugin and make a good record with it? I, I'm gonna answer that for you. I know that's you could. a challenge, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I know you could. I, I, you know what? Probably. I, I probably could. could make it sound good. I know you could. You know, I probably could make something sound good. I may have to use it many times. You know, because mm -hmm. I like to use multiple plugins. Do you times. separate a need for being surgical and being uh, broadband? Do you use different tools or use the same tool? It, it, it all depends on the mix. It does? Yeah. I'll, I'll use the same plugins. You know, I, I don't usually deviate too much because mm -hmm. I know them so well and, and it's part of my sound. Uh -huh. So um, that's that's what I use. If if you were to if you were to have to go to my room down the hall and master a record and you'd never been in my room before, what do you think would be different? I've been in your room before. I know you have. <laughs> but, I started in that room. <laughs> but 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 the room's kind of important, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you, you guys aren't as mobile as we are, are you? No. No, once, you know, mastering guys are usually lifers, you know, for the most part in their, in their room. Uh -huh. yeah. In terms of speakers, uh, when, same thing, right? You get used to a set of speakers and just stay with it. Yeah. Just stay with them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would take a minute or two, you know, a lot uh -huh. of car checks. If I was to go into your room and start, you do car checks like I do. I do car checks. No joke. That's oh, yeah. so cool. Every I take a CD home every night. So, so we do so many things alike. I could be a mastering engineer, right? Yeah, come on in. Nah, you lying. <laughs> <laughs> you know I can't. I just don't have that. I, we hear different. Yeah. Not not better or worse. We just hear different. Gene, man, thanks for thanks for doing this with us, man. Uh, I have the luxury of talking to you every day, sometimes more than I probably should, and you always have been generous answering questions. And and I felt like we were hanging out in your room, and and you you answered a lot of questions that a lot of people wanted to know. And I, on behalf of all all our buddies out there, thanks so, so much for doing that for us. I know you, I know you had to. You've all you're the busiest guy in town. Uh, and you took some time out for us, and we really appreciate that. Thanks for having me. Um, Anytime, man. My pleasure. You know what? Let's close with this, Gene. Um, you just mentioned to me that you had a client that does a song a day, and you mastered 300 songs. 300, how many songs? 356. You... He released one a day last year. Tim Armstrong. Oh, Tim. Yeah. I love Tim. You know Tim. Yeah, we well, did some pink. pink work together. Yeah. Man, that's kind of the future, isn't it? I guess, yeah. Releasing, way, keeping stuff on the internet all the time. Yeah, guys like that, man, they'll always be busy, you yeah. know. Guys, you might think that, that Gene only works with the, the stars and, and the top guys, and you'd be right, but uh, uh, save those nickels and dimes and, 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 and grab a mastering job from him. You'll learn a lot. He's a good cat, and uh, this has been a pleasure for me. I hope you guys learned something from this. I know, you, I, know I did, uh, and I hope you did too, so. Next time. Thanks. Bye. Our returning champion, when we had him on, it was actually episode 14. It was the day of Coachella. He had to rush and get out and get down to perform on remember. stage with Kanye West. We are happy to have back our homie, Mike Dean. Mike. What up, boy? What's up? How are you, man? I'm great. How good, you doing? good, good, good. How are you doing, Dave? Hey, Mike, great to see you, man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm such a big fan of your work, and I listen and and, and rip off a lot of it, um, unpaid, of course. And um, it seems like you're getting a little more minimalistic as as time progresses. You're trying to you're trying to do more with less, and I like that. Is, you see that as a trend, or was that just an aberration for uses? 
it's just kind of a trend for us because we're just learning. If you have something in your song that isn't turned up loud, you should just turn it off. Mm. That's interesting. You know? Mm -hmm. And that the, the, the spaces sort of speak for themselves. Yeah, it makes what's space, missing, yeah. Right? Yeah. Hmm. Has overall, in terms of your approach to production, has it changed in the last few years? Or are you, you see, you see yourself doing things differently? I know you're incorporating more um, variety of things between the analog and the digital world. Is that still morphing? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm really all into Ableton now, so it's changed my workflow a lot. It's kind of taking me back to my workflow back when I used to use Studio Vision, because mm -hmm. it has kind of similar features, or I, I figured out ways to use them similarly. It, 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 Ableton, you're using that more as a production tool, and then you're ultimately mixing in Pro Tools, though, right, still? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes I'm mixing Ableton now. Mm. Oh, that's cool. Ableton, I like the way the engine sounds in there. Mm -hmm. You can really smash stuff loud. Mm. So in the um, Kanye process, does he give you room in the collaboration? Yeah, it's like everybody it? brings in, you know, brings, brings in everything parties. to the party. And just sees what sticks. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. That's going to be a little hectic. But I have 150 it? parts on the song, you know, that you have to sift through right. to find the three parts that make it. It's and, maddening. And, yeah. and is the encouragement to push the envelope, to step outside, or does yeah. it, he just, yeah, just says bring it? Just do whatever you want to do. Oh, cool. Yeah. On on the Daft Punk song, uh, the first cut on uh, the last album, how did that how did that come about? That seems seems like a on the surface not a an obvious collaboration. How did that come about? I actually wasn't there. I'm not sure. Hmm. Uh, but you worked on the song. Yeah, I worked on it later. Oh. I yeah. wasn't around for the creation of it. Oh, I got gotcha. you. That one. Well, can you make something up? <laughs> I think it was like modular sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure though. I've yeah, I think that's how they work. I've heard stories. Um, Never met them actually. So most people haven't. <laughs> in terms of in terms of your hip hop cred and 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 all of that amazing hip hop work you've done, what part of the Selena Gomez part of your life is incorporated into that? <laughs> Trying to phrase the question to embarrass like, you the most. You were the musical director. Not Selena Gomez. Selena Quintanilla. Oh, I thought it was Gomez. No, the real Selena. <laughs> oh, the real Selena. But you were her MD, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I played I keyboards like for her and recorded. Not the real Selena was named after Selena, I heard. So. That's true. Uh, I heard that too. Yeah. What was the real Selena's last name? Quintanilla. Oh, wow. Hmm. Well, was she from Houston? Yeah, from Freeport. That's where you're from? Yeah. So we met in the local music store. You know, I was up there buying like a drum machine or something. Met her father. How were you then? Years ago? Yeah, I was like 17. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow, what an experience for back then. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Ooh. You, went on, you went on tour, like graduated high school and then went on tour, right? Yeah. Do you, do you like it the, like it seems like you like the live thing too, being able to yeah. get out of the studio and get on the road and feel the yeah, crowd. Fun, and, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing like that particular kind of energy. No. Nothing like it, you know. Yeah, studio's pretty boring after that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sticking with the live thing, describe how, how much you guys rehearse for a big show. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of days. The DJ starts the song off and you guys just jump in, right? Yeah. I mean, this is me and the DJ now, me and Mano. Oh, it's down to two, yeah. two people. No joke. Oh, yeah. cool. Well, then you know where you're going. And like on the last tour, we had a backup singer that sang with us. Mm -hmm. But that was it. So basically, once you have structure, you just get up and then go from there. And let yeah, the basically really simple. Yeah. yeah, it does. Actually. I co-produce most of the songs and play a lot of the stuff, so you just... Regurgitate. So when Kanye's performing, does he improvise? Do you have to know where he's going and just be ready yeah. to change all the time? Yeah. Well, yeah. they call you, call, you, you, you play on the set list like on stage pretty much, don't you? Yeah, well, a lot of the show is just me playing piano or like a guitar part and him singing, you know, mm -hmm. not a lot, but you know, like 30% mm -hmm. of the show. Mm -hmm. So that's just whatever. I just, just follow just, him. Just go for it yeah. and take his lead. Mm. Uh, let's do a public service thing, Mike. Um, <coughs> a, a lot of people use the word trap and trap music. Um, you pioneered, and, and rightly so, get credit for um, the Dirty South sound back back during the day with rap a lot records and stuff. You were like what when you started that? 14, 15, 17, something like that. No, I was like twenty-seven. That's what I'm I said. I'm older. And um, it seems to me like that. Yeah, I was seventeen. Yeah. Thanks. That that. That style of music seems like it, it's not that much different than trap 
uh, describe trap to, to the to the uninitiated what it is. I mean, trap music to me was the original music coming out of the South, like Atlanta, Houston. The people were making in their house on like crap equipment, you know. Mm -hmm. So it sounded like shit. Mm -hmm. It's all distorted and nasty. Mm -hmm. and it turned into a sound, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't know this about Mike, and I do know this about him. Mike is one of the most intelligent people I've ever met, but Mike and I have the same problem, and that's uh, when we say things, it doesn't sound that intelligent because of our accents. But her, <laughs> Mike, um, I've seen Mike go into a studio, repair the board, modify the outboard gear, literally, I'm not, mm. and, then, and then do some kind of mind trick voodoo on the st some of the stuff that's not working, <laughs> write the song, play all the parts, track the vocals, mix it, and master it. And I'd say, I'm guessing, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, like you haven't already. Um, I'm guessing about half the stuff he does, that's what happens. He masters it, mixes it, tracks it, writes it, repairs the gear, or creates the gear. I feel so inadequate, Herb. I listen, I, I understand. I haven't even mastered mixing yet. <laughs> but, but, much less talking. Yeah, what, the what, talking's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you gain from that, Mike? Like, I like to send my stuff off to mastering because sometimes it comes back better, but what do, you, what do you get from maintaining that kind of control on the process? I'm just a control freak, I think. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Can't let shit go. But, I mean, I've, I've had good success with mastering people lately. An, a question that has no meaning to anybody but me, but it, it, will we ever have another collaboration between you and Scarface? Th those were some of my favorite records. Yeah, I'm, ever. I'm working on his current record. Oh. Some like I helped mix a couple of songs a few, a couple of weeks ago. Kind of mm -hmm. gave him a standard to meet, match the rest of the mixes too. Nice. And then I'm working on a couple of songs with him. He gave me some acapellas I'm supposed to be working on. With, with the breadth of knowledge you have and ability you have, is there a part that's your favorite? Is there something that you love more than something else? Not really. You just I'm love it, love it playing all? Playing guitar solos. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's why we like each other. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love guitar solos. really loud. Yeah. I went all virtual on my guitar live now. It's kind of neat. Play through Ableton, guitar rig, and... Oh, how cool like is that? Harmony engine, and auto-tune, all kinds of crazy effects. Take Obviously, it works good on guitar. The flexibility, must can't be play a wrong note. You can just you hit the band bar and go, and it plays the scale. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. Let's take a second and, and take me through your your chain, like like your recording chain, how you record guitars these days, and give me an example of a song that you like the sound of that process on that you did. I like hold my liquor, the Kanye song, mm -hmm. that guitar. It's just playing through an intelligent harmonizer with auto tune and guitar rig on it. Oh, cool. An H delay. And, and it's a pretty simple chain, really. So are, are you going into Pro What are you using to get into Pro Tools? For that, I use the old Demeter Bass Pre. That's what I use for my guitar, too. So the output of the Bass Pre goes? Just straight into the HD interface. Okay. And then for stuff I've been tracking lately, for the film work I've been doing, I'm, I've got this $100 Focusrite Focus iTrack Solo. And that's my interface. <laughs> I plug my guitar into it and Off play. you go. That's <laughs> cool. He, does, he, does, he just tossed out film work I do. You know, I know. I was getting ready to go, I'm getting ready to go down that path. So yeah, let's talk about the film I'll work. Toss to you on that one. So you're scoring? What are you doing? Just yeah, scoring and doing like theme songs. Because that's a, that's a different sort of head switch, isn't it? In yeah. terms of the process. There's a lot of committee folks and yeah, folks so, you have to answer to. So yeah. do you like it? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, is it, like is the, it playing the picture that you like, or what, what, what's part of it? Yeah, like they're, everything I've been doing lately, they, they license some of my music, like my MWA stuff that mm -hmm. I've been working on. Mm -hmm. I'm working on my album, like instrumental, slash, like I got some songs with Freddie Gibbs, song mm -hmm. with King Chip. Nice. Kind of use the underground unsung rappers. Very cool. Anyway. Some of them have been licensed for the film, and then when they hire me to score, they want stuff like my stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just kind of just make beats, you know, like I used to sit in Enterprise and make beats all night. Yeah, all night. <laughs> you just make beats and look at the film, you know. That brings me to a point, Mike. I, I, I should use this moment. <laughs> I'm getting emotional. <laughs> oh, God. I should use <laughs> I should use this moment. Her, glasses her, the acting classes are For working. 20 years I've been carrying this burden, but Mike, I'm so sorry I stole your control room and never gave it back at Enterprise. 
It's yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I felt. I got over you. That pushed me to start. <laughs> That's the first time that I ever recorded in, a, in an apartment. <laughs> and I was like, I was so pissed off at Tom Brown. I was like, fuck the Enterprise. <laughs> Never recorded in a studio again. And I really haven't since then. The yeah, are you, you making that up? No, that's what I started. I'm like, Tom, rent me two SSL, or two 10, 1073 Neves, mm -hmm. and two um, SSL quad compressors to run the mics through. I'm like, I'm out of there. I'm like, see you later. And I took my Pro Tools rig to my apartment and started recording. Them. Yeah, he was a little pissy for a minute. But uh, I think he missed the gunfire in the parking lot. Wasn't but, mad at you. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, that's when we used to carry guns. Yeah, yeah I know. Oh, you know what? We used, ought to, we ought to go down. To. We ought to go down that lane because. Um, yeah, I don't miss that time period, but it was exciting because great time. Yeah. we did carry guns with us in the studio. It was a great time. And, yeah, and people, we did carry larger guns than our clients because we had to. Seeing if people you had, getting chased and locked in the control room. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And somebody ran through Studio B and went to Studio A. Yeah. And they were locked in there until the police came. Plus, yeah. it was like a club. Like, if you had nothing to do, sure. you drive that alley, press that button. Well, we had, and you see the cars good, that were in there, you go, Mike's here. We had some Dave's good here. friends. We had some good Mike yeah. had, Mike had, had done. Uh, an incredible song with Scarface and Tupac and the Outlaws were in there a lot. Napoleon yep. and the guys. Who I am was always It was kind of fun. It was and great. Yeah. Shug, Shug was in and out. Mm -hmm. Irv Gotti and all the guys. Yeah, great time. It was a crazy time. And, you know, it's kind of weird. Nobody ever got shot Just too, shot too badly. And, and <laughs> we got beat up a lot. Yeah, there was well, I didn't get beat up. You didn't get beat up. We, we were, they had to protect us because they, we were worth more than the studio time. Um, you tossed out... Um, well, hold on. So what happened was... I was waiting for him to take a break, mm -hmm. and and he he had to go do something for a couple of weeks. So no, I it was thought, Christmas. It was Christmas. It wasn't it was Christmas. Off, I would never. It I would never read you out Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> and um, no. okay, I, I'm under protest with that. It was like, I went home for like a little longer than Christmas. So was, I took a couple of weeks off. Well, I worked through Christmas all the time. So. Right. So I called Tom Brown and said, man, I need the studio, and I never left for also, seven years. Right. That's, that's <laughs> also, I made me use the studio upstairs and learn the Capricorn. Remember, I've, they rocked the Capricorn board for years. That boy sounded pretty good. Yeah. Um, you, another thing you, you mentioned was MWA. Um, I didn't realize that you were of la Latino descent, because that stands <laughs> for Mexicans. Um, what is it? I can't remember. Wrestling. Mexican Wrestling Association. Okay. How'd you come up with that name? That's your DJ name. Yeah, that's just what, you know, my artist name. When artist I'm making name. records, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I was just hanging out one day, talking about... DJing with a Mexican wrestling mask, mask on. <laughs> <laughs> and then it turned into Mexican wrestling match. And I said, well, MWA would be cool or I could steal like NWA's logo. Exactly. And, exactly. You know, change it to that. And boom, here we are. Okay, before we lose our audience, how long do you spend like on a typical mix like with Jay-Z, Kanye? A typical mix. How, about how long does it take you? Not, not necessarily a mix that you tracked yourself, but generally how long do you spend hour-wise total? I know there's Stops and starts. Well, Jay Z's song. I mean, Kanye's song is a whole different monster yeah. from anybody else's. His songs can take weeks, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to mix mm -hmm. with like five people mixing them. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And, and then, and then Kanye. It might be such and such as one element, and you know, somebody else is another element. Mm -hmm. You never know. Mm -hmm. You know. Do you like working that way? Is it? it I, it's I guess. That's how it goes. You know. I guess. Right. The end result <laughs> no speaks what. for it. I yeah. Mean, it's like the. Coolest stuff. Like anybody... Jay Z song, like Crown, for instance, I mixed that. It's like an hour, two hour mix, you know. Ooh, wow. man, we got to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He just put pressure on everybody else we've ever had on this show. Yeah, you remember when I used to be at the Enterprise? I'd, how I'd always be at the front getting a massage from the receptionist. <laughs> I do remember. I remember, be, I remember coming I in one happen. day and you were in a fist fight with uh, somebody in the in the hallway. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> the fog lifted, huh, Mike? So, so, he, so oh I, my God, I, I, walked, yeah. I walked past Mike and I'm like, Mike, what? Man, come on, man. And just went in and did my best. <laughs> and and I, he could have stopped it. Took a break two hours later. And he yeah, I didn't let gone. him fire him, though. <laughs> I know. He did, that's true. He didn't let him fire the assistant. Oh, cool. And you guys were friends after that. It no. all, all ended well. No. Um, <laughs> the guy got me want to go drive by his house now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I invited him in. Stand up. <laughs> I remember his name. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, do you use templates <clears throat> when you're mixing? No, nah, not at all. Mm. Templates frustrate me sometimes. Why? They limit you. Yeah, it's like somebody's already got a preconceived notion of what they're gonna do. Mm. And I just kind of just free freestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I like to do everything though. I'm not DJ. I don't make a set list. I just just how you feel. I it. just start playing songs. Yeah. And, Read the crowd and go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was that? What was that song you did with uh, Brad Paisley? I remember. I remember. It was called I, Outstanding in Our Field was the song when it came out. Mm -hmm. At first it was called ATF. It was the song about shooting guns, drinking beer, and burning shit. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> that would be the ATF. <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> no, and then after, um, after all the gun violence that's been happening, they decided to change the song. When it finally came out, what was it called? Do you remember? Outstanding in Our Field. Outstanding. Oh, about our having field. a party in the field and drinking beer, and, mm. but not shooting guns. Not oh. a very fun time, really. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> Brad's, Brad's from Houston, right? No, he's from Nashville. Oh, he is? Oh, I thought yeah. you met him in Houston or something. Uh, big John hooked me up with him. Are you gonna work? Are you gonna work with him again on anything? Yeah, we're supposed to on this next album. That's fun. They like they like the sampling and stuff. I sample. Yeah, yeah they do. We sampled yeah. old like old country crap. Yeah, the newer country. <laughs> when I listen to it, it's not yeah. far removed from particularly the production. From yeah. Where. Wait a minute, because like one of the things I, I've always known about you is you didn't use a lot of loops and samples. You always like to play stuff, but yeah. on, on the countryside you're you're sampling stuff? Yeah. That's change for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's interesting. And change for them, too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, they like, because it's like they want to sample like, what's the dude's name? Huh? You can talk. Jerry. Yeah, Jerry Reed. Oh, oh sure. The guitar player. Old school. Yeah. Like sampling shit like yeah. that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, I was going down this path about you being intelligent and stuff, and, and I, I, I was going to lead that to the fact that you started playing piano, I don't know, as an embryo or something, and, and you had like piano lessons classical for 18 years. Yeah. You have a lot of respect for your teacher. She passed away about 15 years ago, and you just <coughs> recently bought a Kawhi that was yeah. similar to the one. But people don't understand how gifted well, you know are. That? Uh, my job. <coughs> Our crack yeah. research Her, her blocks me in a room. I'm about to say read this, yeah, read this, read this. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, the thing that I find fascinating is that is that you're pretty good with Chopin and Mozart and all the classical stuff. You you, you did that like about 15 years. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. And then yes. and then on a slightly embarrassing level, you mastered the bassoon. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know what? All kidding aside, um, that eeriness of the bassoon and the oboe. I, I really like the sound of those two things. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'll, I'll I'll diffuse the. And deflect some of the yeah. shame you should feel about they're that. They're cool. They're like the the dark instruments. Mm -hmm. Bassoon is. Mm -hmm. Oboe is more. The early the Scarface girl. records. You you got a little more of your classical abilities in those records. Yeah. Is there a reason why you you've abandoned that a little bit now? It just doesn't fit. Yeah, I mean, I still do some. You know, mm -hmm. I try to. Mm -hmm. Like classical is not. Chord based, it's more it's more arrangement and note based, and, yeah. and, and, and and harmonies traveling in different directions. How did you get as a child from from that element to, to chord based music like popular music and rap I, music? When I started playing in jazz band, I had to figure it out. But I, I mean, I knew music theory from like a little kid. So when I'm playing the notes, I know what chords it's making. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's just kind of a natural. Let me ask you this, as you prepare for Batter's Box. I, I, for a while, I was sort of disillusioned with the kind of state of music and where it was going and the yeah. music was coming out. Now I feel kind of a rebirth. Like there's some interesting stuff out there and people, are, people because they're not all playing the label game, are now sort of pushing the envelope and saying, screw yeah. the rules. Do you see it that way? Like, are you optimistic about where it's going? Is it, are yeah, you, I think so. Do, you, I mean, like I always say, there's a lot of good Good stuff, and there's a lot of really like bad, bad stuff. Yeah, always. <laughs> there always will be probably the yeah, I think equal amount. It's just kind of perception. Like the South Park. You ever see the South Park where all the music the kids listen to when the adults put it on the earplugs, it sounded like farts. <laughs> no, <I> <laughs> but the kids, it sounded like dubstep to them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? But, but now I'm going to look it up. You reach a certain age and start, some will just no, sound like true. shit. Oh, you just like, oh, just remind me of something else. Your solo record, you're, you're thinking about going almost in a dance direction with that, or have you changed your mind? It's kind of like, I don't want to say trap, but... Trap it's, step? <laughs> that's what I called it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, dubstep kind of died to me. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not cool anymore. It's, mm-hmm. Been it's around for a minute. It. It's in Chevrolet commercials now. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's true. A lot of music's in commercials, too, and it's still cool, I guess. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Dave, let's, let's tee up Babbage Box cool. there, sir. Piano. One word reply. Play. Play. Uh, bass. Guitar. Snare. Head away. Kick then. Eight oh eight. Eight oh eight then. Nine oh nine. Nine oh nine. Nine oh nine. Um <laughs> Captain and Tennille. Is this where I sit upside down in my chair? That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> Captain Ca- Tennille. Synthesizer. That was one of his favorite groups. <laughs> I'm gonna destroy his career in one show. <laughs> Bassoon. Who did you play for? You played for the Osmonds, right? <laughs> I swear, I thought that you played guitar for the Osmonds. I'll take it. I'll take I always, it. I always <laughs> like was Somebody trying to picture him picture in a sequence scene. Backing guitar with you know the I mean? Osmonds. I, Please I thought he was like us. on the variety show. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like tapping into Neil time. Absolutely. Come on, man, get serious. It was, it was ukulele. The, it wasn't guitar. It was the Almond Brothers. Though. Oh my God, no, Osmonds, Almonds. I did not. Play with the Almond Brothers. I played with some of the members. Um, <laughs> I'm, how do you say that? For Klimt? Fair Klimt? No, you got it. For Klimt. Anyway. The first one was good. Um, stereo bus. What do you use on a stereo bus? What do I use? Oh, is this still one word? Or? Yeah. Limiter. Yeah. Okay. Can you give me a brand? Massey. Ooh, mm-hmm. 2007. Yeah. Okay, favorite reverb. I like True Herb. Ooh. Cool. Because it's easy. Delay. H Delay. Oh. Um, or thir- or th- huh? 30, what is it called? PCM 42. The real one. Yeah. Your, your island piece of gear, if you could only take one piece of gear on an island with you and a, and a generator, I'll give you that. What would it be? Laptop. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, what's your uh, virtual synth, favorite virtual synth? Oh, man. Probably Contact. And your favorite analog synth? Voyager. What? Oh, well, Juno 106 Ooh. or Voyager. I still have my Juno 106. I actually oh, yeah. got the remote control for it. Really? Yeah, I do. I'll show it to That's you. That's the JX3P. Mm. With a remote control. No, I got the Juno 106 control. What is that? (laughs) It's got all the knobs on the little controller. You can... Hmm. Yeah, uh (laughs) uh-huh. You you want to take back that Marie Osmond joke, don't you? No, you don't want to take it back. back. (laughs) How'd he do, Herb? He did well. I mean, it's the first... This is actually a historic batter's box because it's the first vaporized one. (laughs) <laughs> and, and, and that makes it classic and special. And, it, and it's likely not to be repeated. That's, it, this is in the Hall of Fame. Shouldn't we penalize them for getting locked in that rolling like, drum machine loop no, there? No, 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 because you don't understand the, the athletic Ring. ability yeah. to play batter's box, be effective with a vape thing around it is really unique. So, <laughs> and only time. folks will understand that who so understand wearing, the vape I'm wearing a shirt. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. I had to stop by the office on the way, on the way over here and get a clean shirt. And, a new, <laughs> and there it was. Pen. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> Cole is so enthusiastic. He's actually in the booth crying. It's like, <laughs> like, 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 like a team member. So I think Remember the last show I had a pocket full of blood. So I'm, Absolutely. I'm one right here, one in your ear. Oh, that's right. Because I kept looking right. at you going, that's not a cigarette. That's not <laughs> I like Mike Dean. What, can we have Mike Dean back? And then you took off to Coachella. Chongor Gantz over in the uh, corner office room. Chongor, how you doing? Doing pretty good. How about yourself, man? I'm good, 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 good. You got a few things for... Uh, Chongor. He is busy and off to a meeting, so let's throw a couple at him real quick, Chongor. This first one's from Rory Martin. What has been your process on overcoming any difficulties when working on productions that rely on both live instruments and samples? Hmm. I don't really have any difficulties. <laughs> there are I none. <laughs> I'll just play and, you know, I don't know. Let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, it's all, yeah. Yeah. Chongor, don't, give us an, don't oh. overthink it too much, really. Yeah. Just do shit. That's a good, that's good advice, actually. Chongor, give us another one. Connor Murray, 
Do you find that you intentionally push yourself to think outside the box on some of your more distinctive, unique songs? And if not, are there any specific things or experiences that you might partially credit for your organically avant-garde style? Ooh. Holy crap, that's Connor, that's what a, a question. Um, it's heavy, that was a book. Yeah, no. Once again, I don't really think so much. I just kind of do stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. I kind of just organically let shit flow. I never like, I never drive in the studio thinking, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this bass drum pattern, and, you know what I mean? Or I'm just kind of just let it hit you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would you say, Mike, that that you know? Of course, of course, we were both nerds, and nerds don't get to go out a lot. So, you, as a young child, you're in, at home, and it gets after, after a while when the boredom sets in, you start playing records, and you start learning those records, and then, mm -hmm. and then your tastes kind of start maturing and and spread, and then. What you do today is mostly a function of the taste and the experiences of, yeah. of those early years. And I, so I sat in my room for a whole year with Casey and the Sunshine Band record in the clavinet. Yeah, those <laughs> were great oh, records. Those were great so records. so sad, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I did motocross racing in between. <laughs> I that's all I did. I'd sit and I'd play. You know what? I'd play, what's that song, Get Down Tonight? That shit? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Well, I can play every instrument on that. Like the, you know, <laughs> being, a, being, being a Miami guy, I got to give KC, man. I, I have to tell you, I, I did not like that stuff when it came out. And then, then about five years later, That's I started good. appreciating it. It was pretty, stuff, pretty amazing. Stuff. Just, it was pop, but it was produced well. Yeah, it, it, it was sort of be funky careful. Underneath. I guess the moral. Mike, would, would you say the morals? Be careful what you listen to as a kid, because that's what you're going to be doing as an adult. Sean, give us one more. Do you still avoid working out of studios for the leak factor? And how long does it take you to get sonically comfortable in a new environment? Okay, yeah. I, I, I really more work in, ho in hotels and stuff just from co comfort, you know. Mm. I don't like getting up and going somewhere to work. I like to be in my apartment or... And work right there. Yeah, and just wake up yep. and push play. And Which is actually yeah. probably even safer for the leak factor. Yeah, it is. Because you're there, there's nobody there, you exactly. control your environment. And um, to get used to a sound in a place, it's, I mean, it takes me an hour, you know, yeah, two What minutes. speakers are you using in a, in a hotel room? KRK Rocket 8 with the sub. A <laughs> sub? <laughs> You have to get the, you have to like, sub. clear the room below you, above you, and on every side. Or? No, I don't really play that loud right now. Mm -hmm. It's been pretty good. And laptop, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. just laptop, the case. and I'm just going straight from my interface into the speakers. No big knobs or nothing. Mm -hmm. No speaker switch. It's kind of cool. It's so just, the master fader on the DAW is your level control. Yeah. Pretty cool. Oh, pretty it's cool. like the cleanest signal path. <laughs> you know what I mean? True. Absolutely. What headphones do you use? Do you like? Headphones? Yeah. The Rizzas. Okay. I like those a lot. Oh, cool. Cool. I didn't cool, need cool. set Rizza. <laughs> we all do, <did>, Rizza. <laughs> <laughs> you want some? You want some? I'm supposed to see him. Just, this just week. get Rizza on the show. Headphones yeah, for yeah. everybody. Yeah. Uh, at least for us. This is great. <laughs> I like I, <laughs> I love that. Rizzo. I miss I yeah, miss price for everybody else. Yeah. I miss <laughs> a world where Wu Tang was the top group. You see their new album coming out, right? I heard about it. Yeah, and you have to go see it. Oh really? You have to go to a place and listen to it on headphones. Award oh, shows cool. haven't been the same without ODB, you know? <laughs> well, here's what is true. This hour has gone very fast. Very fast. Brother, thank you for coming. Thank you. One, one more again. You know, we, we will be at you constantly as long as you are Mike Dean and we're, and we're Pensado placing. What episode is this? Time Definitely man. I'm coming back for episode 420. No, no, oh, <laughs> oh, no question. 420 <laughs> is absolutely yours. <laughs> David, take us home. All right, guys. Um, it's just an honor for me to sit in front of Mike Dean. I've known Mike so long and um, always been inspired every time I'm around him. He's, he's a true talent and a gift to uh, all music, not just hip hop, and a pioneer in many different types of music. And um, spend a little time, cruise around the net, check out some of the things that he's known for. And I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll feel what I feel, that you can bring integrity, you can bring talent, you can bring a, a musical ability to hip hop, and it's still hip hop. See you next week.